Hey there, this is John Barton from JB Cases. So, I'm here at the uh, at, at an event, um, and I was doing a, a repair. I was doing a repair on the bottom of one of our cases, and um, once in a while, you know, we'll uh, we'll we'll not sew this right or something, and so it'll kind of the rubber will kind of chip off on the bottom. So, you know, that's covered under our warranty, and we'll take care of it. Um, so, but it's really difficult for me to remove that bottom and um, put a new one on, uh, but you know, kind of sacrifice our fingers to do it. One of the reasons why it's difficult to remove the bottom is because not only do we seal it um, and do some extra things to make it really tough, but we also use barbed nails. So, look at this nail. Let's see if I can get it to focus here and you can see it. I don't know if you guys can really see that. This thing's not focusing on it. But this is a barb nail. Now this nail here, you can see that's smooth, right? So I decided that uh, since I was at the show um, and I've been doing comparisons on a knockoff case of ours, uh, not a knockoff of ours, but a, a case that is a knockoff of our case. Uh, I decided that I was going to take the bottom off of this. Uh, this is a knockoff that we've seen here at the show. And uh, you can see I wrote all over it and stuff like that. Um, not mentioning any brand names or any names or anything like that. You guys can find it out yourselves. Um, but one of the things that I've harped on constantly is that you don't know what's actually inside the case. Um, you know, so when somebody does a knockoff, they don't necessarily care about your cue. So here, for example, you really guys can't really see that. Here, I'll get a flashlight. So if you look at this, you'll see that looks sort of like our interior, but what you don't know is, is that you can only feel that up to a few inches. You don't know what's happening on this case. You don't know on the interior what's happening from here down. All right, so you don't know if it's actually any good or not. So the only way to tell is to open it up. So that's what I did. So keep in mind that when we do our bottoms, we seal this up. We glue it, we nail it, we seal it. It's practically waterproof right here. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say it's it's 100% waterproof. That's not, that's not why we build it that way. But we do all that we can to make it super tough at the bottom so that you don't have to worry about the bottoms coming off or any, anything happening to your cues. And we do a lot of work on this area right here just to make it tough. So therefore, that's why it's hard to take it apart when we do need to make a repair. So I decided that I was going to take this one off and we were going to see what happened. Here, by the way, you know, you can see how these little, you know, the rivets, rivets look so tough, right? But until it gets a little bit of pressure and just pulls right out right there. That's because the people who build the case, they don't know what the hell they're doing. And the people who buy the case, who buy the knockoff, they don't know that the people who built the case don't know what they're doing. So anyway, I decide to take it apart. So this is what I did. First I took the nails out, which are shitty nails, as you can see right here. Then I find out there's no glue whatsoever in here. So there's nothing to seal this at all, right? It's just those nails, just these nails holding it in. Now take a look at this. Can you guys see here where it's split? There's a couple different things going on here. First of all, these are nail points. See the bottom of this? See these nails right here? These are nail points coming up into the cavity of the, of the case right here. And you see how it split the wood? 
See how it split the wood here? So now you've already damaged the wood trying to put it together. And you've got a situation where you've got these nail points inside of here. So if this little piece that's not even glued on gets like sideways or anything like that or torn up, because obviously you can see here how the nail points are already tearing it up. They didn't even bother to glue any of this together. So they didn't bother to make the piece of wood a little bit longer so that the nail points don't come through. Then they didn't bother to actually glue this down so that the nail points can't get in here. So, you know, that, that right there is negligent enough. But then, this is what the bottom looks like here. On here, let me get, where did I put my uh, light? Is my flashlight? All right. Check this out. This is the bottom of this. And I don't know if you guys can really see how shitty this is here. But uh, let me see if I can convey it. So it's really thin. I mean, there's the barest amount of padding in here at the bottom. So let's look at this one more time, okay? This is the bottom. Now I'm going to show you something really, really, really crappy in just a moment. This is the top. So, now, when you look at this, you feel comfortable, right? I would, it's actually not bad right there. But what do you think if, the, if, if this was what was at the bottom, if this was at the top, would you feel comfortable with it? I don't think so. So basically, you're getting cheated here because your cues are held snugly right here and then they're allowed to rattle down in here. So now here's the kicker on all this. Watch this. So. This is what we have right here. This piece together with this. This together, from the red part here to the top of the foam rubber, is, what is that? Let's see here, let me, let me look at it so I can see. It's uh, three quarters of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna hold this together so you guys can see it. So from the top of the foam rubber to the red is three quarters of an inch. Now, let's look at how deep it is here from the top of here, right, on down. We're gonna go three quarters and we're gonna measure it and then see if there's any gap between the rubber and the where the fabric ends. So this is two, almost three inches here. And I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. I gotta take this off so you can see the uh, you can actually see the yardstick here. All right. So, in here, where the fabric ends right here, okay, is almost three inches. So, I'm gonna see if I can show you guys that. Ah, this is ridiculous, okay. Let me try this and see if I can see if I can show it to you this way. All right, can you guys see that a little bit better? All right. Sorry, this is so long, you know, but um, but the deal here is is it, it just this shit bothers me, you know? It bothers me as a craftsman and a case maker and someone who collects cues and plays pool. Um, but check it out. So, this is to right there is about 
almost three inches. God, it's really hard to show this here. Let me see if I can let me see if I can get it lower here so you guys can see it. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this all on the fly here. So let's see what we let's see what I can make happen. All right. Check this out. So the measurement to where this stops, right? This is the this is the, these are the cavities that your cue is going into. So the measurement here is. And I'm not pushing down on this at all. It's almost three inches right there. So over here, over here, it's like two, two and three quarters inches. Okay, so it's two and three quarters inches. Now, keep in mind, we said here is three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch to where the red goes. So to make that clear, this goes in here. And it stops, it stops right here. So, Let's examine this for just a second. That means if we take three quarters of an inch right now, if we take three quarters of an inch, I need a marker or a pen or something. Here we go. Watch this. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna mark off three quarters of an inch right here. Now I'm gonna mark off three inches, but I'm gonna be generous, okay? I'm gonna even back it off a quarter inch. So, we're gonna say the fabric ends right here. The fabric ends right there at two and a quarter inches. So, right, fabric ends right here. Foam rubber ends right here. So what does that mean? That means that you have this gap of air in between where, where the fabric ends and the foam rubber ends. So you've got two inches. You basically have two inches of air in here. So now, let's talk about what happens when you have that two inches of air in there. Can somebody hand me a cue, please? Okay. Great cue. This cue has hearts on it. It's very cute, right? So, love is what they don't have for your cue. Look at this. Look at this. If, let's say that the cue is held snugly right here, right? And down here there's air, okay? So the, the cue goes all the way to the bottom, but Below my fingers here, there's nothing to hold the cues. Can I have a shaft, please? So, let's say that it's nice and snug right here, right? But down here, it's very thin, something very thin in here, and it's just air below my fingers right here. So what happens? when you're driving down the road. Now that's a little bit dramatic, right? Because obviously it's hard for me to hold it. But you can see it acts as a fulcrum right here. So the foam rubber holding it up here allows everything down here to clatter together. Because they know, they know that when you look at, they know When you look at this, 
when you look at this, you feel safe. You don't know that this is this is like this at the bottom. You don't know that you have air in here. You don't know that you have two inches of air between where your cues come out. Let's look at that. Can I have another cue, please? So let's take a look at this. This is what you got. Right there. Do you see anything in between the cues right there? All right, here. I'm gonna show you what that means. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on. So I got that put on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push the cue down as far as it goes. Okay, now I'm going to open it up. Let's see what we're looking at. Okay, let's see what we're looking at here. That's what your cues are doing inside of this case. Do you see do you see any fabric in between these parts? Do you see any fabric in between those parts right there? No, you don't. Because that's what's happening when you put your cues in here. And the top acts like a fulcrum. The bottom allows the cues and everything to clatter together. So Honestly, folks, when you're out there, you're going to make a buying decision. Just remember that you don't always know how a case is made. So anyone who's a dedicated case maker, okay, is generally going to be more sensitive to protecting the queue than anyone who's just making knockoffs and importing them. Because, let's be honest, the guys that are making knockoffs, the people over wherever the knockoffs are made, they don't really give a shit about your queue. They're just trying to provide a product as cheaply as possible to a customer who asked for it. So the customer is a distributor, it's, you know, a, a brand, a, a Q brand or whatever, right? The customer are not case makers in that situation. They don't give a shit about your Q. All they care about is acquiring a popular look for as little money as possible so they can make as much money as possible selling it to you cheaper than the original brand. So if you got a guy like me who's a case maker, I have a reputation to uphold. I don't want to pay for your cues. I don't want your cues to get hurt. I don't want to get a reputation as having a case that harms your cues, right? I mean, that's the exact opposite of what a case should be for. So what these guys depend on is they depend on you looking at the top and thinking, oh, that's really secure. And then your cues get damaged and you don't make the connection right away that it's because maybe the bottom of the case isn't doing the job it's supposed to. So you might think, oh, I bumped it on a table or I scratched it somewhere or this, that, and the other. Most people don't snap to it why their cues are getting damaged. So that's something I really want you guys to think about when you're out there case shopping. There's a lot of choices out there, there are. There's a lot of great designs, there's a lot of great looking cases out there. But what I want you to do is, I want you to invest in a flashlight first. 
and I want you to look inside the case. See if you can see anything from the top that makes you feel uneasy. Figure out some kind of a test or something to see. Shake the case. Put cues in it. Tell the distributor, say, hey, do you mind if I go over to your other wall here and I take some of your thousand dollar Sean's? Do you mind if I take your Tad and your Balabushka and all your high-end cues off your wall here? Because the guy selling you the case, he's got some high-end cues over here maybe. Tell him, say, I want to take your high-end cues and I want to put them in this case and I want to shake the shit out of it like this. I want to take it and I want to go like this and I want to shake it and I want to hear what's happening inside that case. And if they won't let you do it with their cues that they own, if they will not let you do that, I suggest you do not buy the case. Really, I suggest that you do not buy the case. If they won't let you test their case with their cues, don't buy the case. Give me my case, please. This is my case. I eat what I cook. This is my case with $2,000 worth of cues in it. That's what I think. Now listen, I'm going to take off, I'm going to take off everything that rattles on here, right in front of you. Everything that makes noise, I'm going to take it off because I want you to hear something. All right, except for the zippers, I've gotten everything off of here. Now listen. What do you hear? You don't hear anything. The reason you don't hear anything is because our liners are fully padded all the way down. Your cues, every shaft, every butt is fully enclosed in foam rubber and fabric the full length. So there you go folks. Um, just buyer beware, test everything, and if they won't let you use their cues to test it, maybe they don't even trust what they're selling to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.